I'm in. Today, we're going to be talking about SQL injection. So SQL injection isn't some hackers only kind of topic, right? It's actually the number one ranked vulnerability uh, to web applications. So it's our jobs as DBAs and developers to understand how it works and more importantly, how to protect against it on our servers. If you're unfamiliar with what SQL injection is, basically it's when someone's able to execute some SQL query that you didn't intend to run on your server. To make that easier to understand, let's take a look at an example. I have this registered users table, which along with a login username, uh, we have individuals' full names, as well as their hash passwords and other fields. I also have this stored procedure, which selects a user's full name based on the parameter that's getting passed in based on their login name, right? So think about how this might get used on a website where if you go to you know top right corner, it said, welcome back, Bert, right? So we're passing in someone's login name and it's spitting out the full name of that user. So now if a user's logging in and is passing in their username, they're passing in their valid username, like in this example, everything works fine, and the stored procedure returns that user's full name, and we have no problems. But if our user is malicious and they pass in a login name that looks kind of funny like this, that's actually gonna reveal every single full name in our registered users table. What that means is we've been hacked. So this is a prime example of SQL injection. And the reason it works is our stored procedure is dynamically building a SQL query. We're concatenating in that username parameter to the end of our where clause. And when a user passes in their actual you know, username, login name, everything works fine. It executes and runs exactly like you would expect it. Our malicious user's login name though uh, will actually still generate a valid SQL query. It just has an or operator at the end with a one equals one predicate that's always gonna evaluate as true. That means basically all the rows in our registered users table are gonna get revealed to that user. And if getting all the full names isn't bad enough, it's not a stretch to think that that user is able to write some additional clever SQL to actually reveal all the contents of that table or even the contents of other tables on our database. The big problem here is, is the user is typing in their own you know, portion of a SQL query and we're blindly executing it. That's the issue with SQL injection. And let's take a look at how we can actually prevent that from happening. So in terms of prevention, there's a lot of things that developers can do on the front end in terms of sanitizing user input data, um, specifying the types of data that can be returned from a SQL query, making sure there's not more columns or less columns coming back than were originally intended. That's all on the front end. As SQL developers, right on the back end, I have two basic ways that I like preventing SQL injection attacks from happening. The first is really basic, just don't use dynamic SQL. If you're not concatenating user input data into your SQL queries and then executing them, this kind of problem can't happen. So like in, in the example of this sort of procedure, there is absolutely no reason why we need to be concatenating in that user input data to our query. We could have just used a, a parameter in our where clause and everything would work fine. And because it's parameterized, SQL injection won't work. Now, as easy as it's to say, don't use dynamic SQL, sometimes you have to. So the second solution that I like using is to use the stored procedure SP execute SQL. What SP execute SQL does is actually take your generated SQL string and looks for any parameters that you've specified and actually parameterizes them. What that does then is essentially remove um, this vulnerability because your parameters are now behaving like parameters. You're not concatenating these strings together. And if a user tries to type in this malicious code, it's not going to run as they expect. So now that you know what SQL injection is and how to prevent it going forward, you might be thinking, okay, how many of these types of injection vulnerabilities do I have on my server today? So I've written this query that you can run. Um, I have it linked to my blog post below as well as up here in the corner that will search for possible SQL injection queries on your server. The way it works is it searches all stored procedures and functions, looking for a plus sign that's right next to a at sign, right? Indicating the start of a parameter. It's a little bit more clever with that, getting rid of any white space, just in case you know it wraps around on new lines or anything like that. As well as it looks for an execute statement in the body of that stored procedure, which kind of indicates that we're executing some type of built SQL string. 
Now, this query isn't perfect. The results that it brings back don't necessarily mean that that query is vulnerable to SQL injection, but I've found it really helpful to kind of run and get a good idea of, as a starting point of where I should be looking for possible SQL injection vulnerabilities. So check that out. I hope it helps you find some potential vulnerabilities on your server that exist today. That's it. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe below, and I'll see you next week. Thanks.